History of Measurement, Wikipedia Audio The earliest recorded systems of weights and measures originate in the 3rd or 4th millennium BC. Even the very earliest civilizations needed measurement for purposes of agriculture, construction, and trade. Early standard units might only have applied to a single community or small region, with every area developing its own standards for lengths, areas, volumes, and masses. Often such systems were closely tied to one field of use, so that volume measures used, for example, for dry grains were unrelated to those for liquids, with neither bearing any particular relationship to units of length used for measuring cloth or land. With development of manufacturing technologies, and the growing importance of trade between communities and ultimately across the earth, standardized weights and measures became critical. Starting in the 18th century, modernized, simplified and uniform systems of weights and measures were developed, with the fundamental units defined by ever more precise methods in the science of metrology. The discovery and application of electricity was one factor motivating the development of standardized internationally applicable units. Weights and measures have taken a great variety of forms over the course of history, from simple informal expectations in barter transactions to elaborate state and supranational systems that integrate measures of many different kinds. Weights and measures from the oldest societies can often be inferred at least in part from archaeological specimens, often preserved in museums. The comparison of the dimensions of buildings with the descriptions of contemporary writers is another source of information. An interesting example of this is the comparison of the dimensions of the Greek Parthenon with the description given by Plutarch from which a fairly accurate idea of the size of the attic foot is obtained. Because of the comparative volume of artifacts and documentation, we know much more about the state-sanctioned measures of large, advanced societies than we do about those of smaller societies or about the informal measures that often coexisted with official ones throughout history. In some cases, we have only plausible theories and we must sometimes select the interpretation to be given to the evidence. By studying the evidence given by all available sources, and by correlating the relevant facts, we obtain some idea of the origin and development of the units. We find that they have changed more or less gradually with the passing of time in a complex manner because of a great variety of modifying influences. It is possible to group official measurement systems for large societies into historical systems that are relatively stable over time, including, the Babylonian system, the Egyptian system, the Philippe Ryan system of the Ptolemaic Age, the Olympic system of Greece, the Roman system, the British system, and the metric system. Sources of Information The earliest known uniform systems of weights and measures seem all to have been created at some time in the 4th and 3rd millennia BC among the ancient peoples of Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Indus Valley and perhaps also Elam as well. Early Babylonian and Egyptian records and the Hebrew Bible indicate that length was first measured with the forearm, hand, or finger and that time was measured by the periods of the sun, moon, and other heavenly bodies. When it was necessary to compare the capacities of containers such as gourds or clay or metal vessels, they were filled with plant seeds which were then counted to measure the volumes. When means for weighing were invented, seeds and stones served as standards. For instance, the carat, still used as a unit for gems, was derived from the carob seed. The Egyptian cubit, the Indus Valley units of length referred to above and the Mesopotamian cubit were used in the 3rd millennium BC and are the earliest known units used by ancient peoples to measure length. 
The units of length used in ancient India included the Donas, or Donaj, the Krasa, and the Yujana. The common cubit was the length of the forearm from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. It was divided into the span of the hand or the length between the tip of little finger to the tip of the thumb, the palm, or width of the hand, and the digit or width of the middle finger. The royal cubit which was a standard cubit enhanced by an extra palm thus seven palms or twenty-eight digits long was used in constructing buildings and monuments and in surveying in ancient Egypt. The inch, foot, and yard evolved from these units through a complicated transformation not yet fully understood. Some believe they evolved from cubic measures, others believe they were simple proportions or multiples of the cubit. In whichever case, the Greeks and Romans inherited the foot from the Egyptians. The Roman foot was divided into both 12 unci and 16 digits. The Romans also introduced the mill passus or double steps, the pace being equal to 5 Roman feet. The Roman mile of 5,000 feet was introduced into England during the occupation. Queen Elizabeth I changed by statute, the mile to 5,280 feet or 8 furlongs, a furlong being 40 rod s of 5.5 yards each. The introduction of the yard as a unit of length came later, but its origin is not definitely known. Some believe the origin was the double cubit, others believe that it originated from cubic measure. Whatever its origin, the early yard was divided by the binary method into 2, 4, 8, and 16 parts called the half-yard, span, finger, and nail. The association of the yard with the gird or circumference of a person's waist or with the distance from the tip of the nose to the end of the thumb of King Henry I are probably standardizing actions, since several yards were in use in Britain. There were also rods, poles, and perches for measurements of length. The following table lists the equivalents. The grain was the earliest unit of mass and is the smallest unit in the apothecary, avertipoise, tower, and troy systems. The early unit was a grain of wheat or barley corn used to weigh the precious metals silver and gold. Larger units preserved in stone standards were developed that were used as both units of mass and of monetary currency. The pound was derived from the mina used by ancient civilizations. A smaller unit was the shekel, and a larger unit was the talent. The magnitude of these units varied from place to place. The Babylonians and Sumerians had a system in which there were 60 shekels in a mina and 60 minas in a talent. The Roman talent consisted of 100 libra which were smaller in magnitude than the mina. The troy pound used in England and the United States for monetary purposes, like the Roman pound, was divided into 12 ounces, but the Roman uncia was smaller. The carat is a unit for measuring gemstones that had its origin in the carob seed, which later was standardized at 1 144 ounce and then 0.2 gram. Goods of commerce were originally traded by number or volume. When weighing of goods began, units of mass based on a volume of grain or water were developed. The diverse magnitudes of units having the same name, which still appear today in our dry and liquid measures, could have arisen from the various commodities traded. The larger avertipoise pound for goods of commerce might have been based on volume of water which has a higher bulk density than grain. The stone, quarter, hundredweight, and ton were larger units of mass used in Britain. Today only the stone continues in customary use for measuring personal body weight. The present stone is 14 pounds, but an earlier unit appears to have been 16 pounds. The other units were multiples of 2, 8, and 160 times the stone, or 28, 112, 
and 2,240 pounds, respectively. The hundredweight was approximately equal to two talents. The ton of 2,240 pounds is called the long ton. The short ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. A ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. The division of the circle into 360 degrees and the day into hours, minutes, and seconds can be traced to the Babylonians who had sexagesimal system of numbers. The 360 degrees may have been related to a year of 360 days. Many other systems of measurement divided the day differently counting hours, decimal time, etc. Other calendars divided the year differently. Earliest Known Systems The metric system was first described in 1668 and officially adopted by France in 1799. Over 19th and 20th centuries, it became the dominant system worldwide, although several countries, including the United States and China, continue to use their customary units. Among the numerous customary systems, many have been adapted to become an integer multiple of a related metric unit, the Scandinavian mile is now defined as 10 kilometers, the Chinese jin is now defined as 0.5 kilograms, and the Dutch ons is now defined as 100 grams. The American system is unusual in that its units have not been adapted in such a manner. History of Units Units of Length Units of Mass Units of Time and Angle Metric Conversion